As you know, the new Yaesu FT-DX10 is due to arrive in December. That means ready for Christmas. Well, let's hope so. In the meantime, I've got some more information that I want to show you about the FT-DX10. Some good photographs and some other SDR information. Once again to the Waters and Stanton video channel, my name's Peter Waters. Just over a week ago, we published on the YouTube channel details of the Yaesu FTDX10, a new transceiver that they're going to launch um, at the end of the year. And I think we were the first dealer, actually, or you know, first UK dealer to put up um, a video with brief details. And there are brief details because with all new transceivers or with all new products, the uh, the actual sort of nitty gritty and the details of the product sometimes remain buried until just before release, and uh, we've had a number of questions about the uh, new FTDX10, and you know, some of them we can't answer because we don't know. Um, but I think that the the good thing about the FTDX10 is that. It's a step forward for Yesu. Certainly, it looks uh, looks a nice product, and of course, it has many, if not most, of the features of the FTDX101, which was released uh, around about a year ago now. Um, the main difference is it's got a single receiver. Now, I think for a lot of people that really doesn't matter too much, uh, provided that the guts inside uh, give you a similar performance to the FTDX101, then it's obviously going to be a serious uh, transceiver. And, of course, it has four metres on. And that's good news because the Japanese are realising now that four metres is a band that, even though it's not available in the USA, um, commands a lot of interest, a lot of respect, and uh, hams are eager to have a radio that has the 4 metre band on it. So the FTDX10 has got the 4 metre band on it. Now we've received some high quality photographs from Yesu, and I think probably the best way of displaying them is actually on this video, because you, I think you'll get the details a bit more than you would do if we just put it onto our website. So. We've put on this video a series of close-up photographs of the FT-DX10. I think the interesting thing with photographs is if you study them, you get a feel for what the transceiver can do, what the features are, simply by looking at the dial. So we've put these, feet, these uh, photographs together, and I hope that uh, you find it useful. Now, as I say, this is quite a short video, but at least it'll give you a bit more visual information of the new FTDX10. So I'll put a little backing track on here and just take a look at the photographs.
One of the interesting things I noticed on the rear of the radio is that there's a socket for an external display. Now that's going to please a lot of people. I've had quite a few people asking about uh, an external monitor. So you can plug in an external monitor into the FT-DX10. Uh, also I noticed that there's a couple of USB sockets on the back. And there is provision for remote control via a LAN connection. So Yesu are sort of catching up with the fact that a lot of uh, hams now, for one reason or another, are interested in remote operation. So that's, uh, that's a good uh, uh, feature there. The first IF is 9 megahertz, and um, you rather took me back a bit because uh, I think 9 megahertz may have originated from years and years ago when the first SSB uh, transceiver designs came out and they had um, a dual band design which was 80 meters and 20 meters and the idea was 80 meters was great for the local band and 20 meters was your DX band and the reason that 9 megahertz IF was used, because uh, 9 megahertz I think was used as the, as the primary uh, SSB generation um, uh, filter system the reason that 9 megahertz was selected because if you work it out if you have a 5 meg oscillator that 5 meg oscillator will mix with 80 meters and 20 meters to produce a 9 meg IF output so in other words you 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 um, you add 5 to one and take 5 from the other and you add up end up with 9 megahertz that's probably a bit of useless information which may or may not be right but there we are one other um, thing that has been discussed recently, not generally, but uh, one or two people have mentioned this, and you may well have your own thoughts on this, that does SDR have its own uh, sound? Now, the reason I say this is because SDR is very clinical. With SDR, you can produce filters that are extremely sharp and extremely um, uh, steep curved. So in other words, you know, the, the, the signal either gets through or it doesn't get through. On the traditional uh, filters that we've used in the past, crystal filters and mechanical filters, the pass band goes like that. So there's a more gentle cutoff. Now, one of the interesting things that I noticed recently is ICOM in the IC7300, and I think on the 9700 as well, um, you have a choice of either sharp or soft. Now, there must be a reason for that. And I think soft tries to emulate the sort of less steep filters. And this takes me back to days of high fire it's probably still going on now where the argument about the, the transistor sound the solid state sound does that exist and how did it, how does it compare with the vels well i have to say that i think there's merit in that argument um i mentioned i think recently that um when i went to orkney they had some old valve radios working there old broadcast radios and i was struck with the quality of the sound it was it was quite quite pleasant to listen to. Now, this was basically AM, of course, but it was quite pleasant to listen to. And I think maybe the same is true with ham radio transceivers. Maybe the traditional SUPET receiver with either your mechanical or crystal filters creates a less clinical sound, a slightly more rounded sound. Now, I know that uh, some of you may some of you may agree and some of you may disagree. Um, I'll let you fight it out in the comments because I, um, I'm not entirely sure. But I do think that we may be experiencing a difference in the sound quality between SDR and your traditional super hat. Certainly I noticed that um, the filters are very sharp and uh, you know, either uh, if you're listening to CW, that either the signals there is not there, there's no tailing off, it suddenly disappears. So that may have an effect. The fact that you've got a sharp filter will not only cut off the high frequencies at a predetermined point, but that also cut off the base frequencies at a predetermined point. So do we have an SDR sound? 
I don't know. I'll let you decide on that. But it's an interesting discussion point. As I say, you can put your comments below. I'm not going to join in. <laughs> I'll let you fight it out. Another question, of course, is that Yesu are going down the road of a hybrid design where the front end is traditional. You've got your traditional uh, selectivity at the front end and so forth. Uh, you convert down to uh, uh, an IF. Uh, in the case of the FDDX10, I think it's got two IFs. And then you process using SDR. Uh, ICOM have gone the other direction. They've gone the whole hog and you've got SDR right from the front. And a lot of people say, well, OK, the front end selectivity is not going to be so good and so forth. Um, they may be right, they may be wrong, I don't know. But the fact is that some of these differences you can replicate on a lab bench, but in sort of real life operation, they are not so noticeable. Now, I, I suppose that the power of SDR has been demonstrated by some of these small SDR receivers that you can buy for 50 pounds, 100 pounds and so forth, plug them into your computer and you get very, very good performance. And the Hack Green has got a, an SDR a receiver running there. They don't seem to suffer too much uh, from any front end problem. So maybe, although you can argue the case in the, in the lab, maybe the case is not so obvious in real life. And of course, most of us operate modest stations with modest antenna systems, and we work along quite happily. So I'm not quite sure whether one or the other um, is, is the preferable design, whether Yesu have got it right, ICOM have got it right, or whether it doesn't really matter. Again, I'm not going to join in the argument. I don't know the answer, but it's an interesting uh, discussion. So there we are. Um, a short update on the FTDX10, a little bit of discussion about SDR generally, and I hope that uh, I've perhaps uh, given you food for thought, food for discussion, food for argument, who knows? Anyway, thanks for watching this video. As usual, if you find it interesting, uh, please press the subscribe button and uh, look forward to the next one. In the meantime, take care, keep safe, enjoy your ham radio. Bye. Actually, I did ask him to tell you that we're taking orders for the FDDX10, so I do it myself now. We're taking orders for the FDDX10.